Each year, U.S. feed yards finish over 26 million head of cattle, cattle that come from farms and ranches in every state in this country, and even from Mexico and Canada. Once they get here, they're fed the best rations, they're given the best care, and they're looked after and managed by professionals who have a vested interest in their health, their performance, and their well-being. Hi, I'm Todd McCartney. The program is called Feed Yard Focal Points, and it's a chance for us to take a look at many ways where we can improve the principles and the practices of our animal care and our animal handling. Not only to take better care of the animals we're in charge of, but to do a better job of being stewards of our industry. The message here is simple. What happens in feed yards like this, by people like you, has a profound impact on beef quality, the way consumers perceive our product, and the future of our livelihood. Dr. Temple Grandin is one of the top livestock behaviorists in the world. She's credited with helping many of the large food companies, packing plants, and feed yards actually improve their animal care and handling principles. Here are a few key points from Dr. Grandin. Humane handling practices are important because they're the right thing to do. Another reason why calm, low-stress cattle handling is important is it, impro it improves the productivity of your cattle better weight gain, less likely to get dark cutters, also greater safety for employees. There's a lot of good reasons for low stress handling. And I want to emphasize the importance of remaining calm while you're handling cattle. No yelling, no screaming. If you remain calm, then the cattle remain calm. People need to find the distractions in their facilities that make animals balk and remove them. Little pieces of chain hanging down, that's one of the worst ones. Piece of plastic on the ground, that's gonna make the cattle balk. Also, your own shadow in the wrong place will make cattle balk. And on sunny days, this can be a big problem. On cloudy days, it's not gonna be a big problem. Vehicles parked close by, a water bottle on the ground, a coat on a fence, people standing in the wrong place. They're not gonna approach uh, visible people. You need to look for all of these small details because they're gonna make a big difference in how quietly cattle are gonna go through your facility. And then you always need to make sure no yelling and screaming, no whistling, calm, keep your mouth closed, just, just maybe a little ch ch. The public is getting more and more concerned about what we do with animals. I think we need to look at everything that we do with animals and say, if we had a video feed out to all the web pages and out to the world, how is this going to play with the average uh, consumer or just the average person? Dr. Tom Knopfsinger is a feed yard veterinarian who spends a great deal of time teaching feed yard crews how to properly handle incoming cattle. What is amazing to me is that when, when crews are quiet and effective, all of a sudden the production of work, the number of head through a facility increases rather than decreases. Sometimes time is an illusion and it, it looks like people are doing things very, very slowly. But if you look at your watch, we have a pin of cattle re-implanted and only 45 minutes have passed by. It's a sign of very, very efficient cattle flow. Veterinarians across the country are helping to educate feedlots on the importance of good animal handling and the role it plays in health care. The most critical area of handling cattle is creating a culture within the feed yard because the people that work with the cattle are the, on the ground day to day are the most important when it comes to the health and well-being of these animals. And it's exciting when you work with crews and you see the light come on and the first thing that they put on their mind is how can we better care for these cattle and how can we move forward. When we think about handling sick cattle, it's, it's no different than the principles in which we handle the healthy cattle. The difference is, is that sometimes these animals are more stressed, have more anxiety. Sometimes we have to take more time and more caution as we move these animals from their pen to the hospital. Now let's take a look more specifically at animal care and handling. If you think about it, everybody that works at a feed yard has the obligation to become a cattle care expert. And one of the first and most important jobs is to figure out how to minimize the uncontrolled and the unorganized movement of cattle. This can cause stress, sickness, wear and tear on equipment or facilities, and injuries to both handlers and cattle. It begins with knowledge of the predator-prey relationship under which cattle have evolved for millions of years. When cattle are confronted with a predator stimulus, like you, their first impulse is to bunch up or move away. And while working with cattle that want to get away from us can be very difficult, 
it actually can be a good thing too. If cattle choose to move away, any person can use this behavior to their advantage by handling the livestock slowly, calmly, and patiently. When attempting to get cattle to move in a calm manner, here are a few tips. Handlers should start by walking slowly toward a group of cattle. When the cattle first begin to react, the handler should immediately back out of their flight zone. This graphic shows the flight zone of cattle. Proper use of the flight zone allows the handler to start and stop the movement of cattle and also to turn them in the desired direction. When following behind a group of moving cattle, it's important to not walk directly behind them, but rather move in a diagonal pattern back and forth behind the herd, which causes pressure and release in the animal's flight zones. A real important point while working a foot is, is to keep moving. If you get too still, the cattle forget you're there, and then when, they, when you make a move or you ask them to do something, they react too quickly. Sometimes they'll run by you, or sometimes they'll panic and run into the herd. So either just not a real big movement, but a nice, slow, easy flowing movement really keeps the cattle's focus on you. And then when we're ready to bring the cattle out of the pen, it's real easy to step in position. Use the same movement techniques when horseback. Now to get our movement started up the alley, rather than maybe popping a whip or yelling and screaming too much, all we have to do is just ride back and forth in a V. And you'll see if we just ride in a V or go in a straight line here going back and forth, just working on our horses moves front and back, you'll see how nice these cattle will take off and, and move up the alley. This is a real wide alley. The feed alley is, is real wide, so you really got to be able to use this ability to go back and forth to get these cattle to flow. Proper cattle handling really is based on powers of observation. What the principle is, is that we let the cattle tell us where they want us. So in fact, we are observant of the very, very first response cattle give us to our presence. So as we would approach these animals, instead of watching for a gate or watching for the scale, we're watching for the first animal to acknowledge our presence. And then as we watch that interaction, we try to respond to that animal's movement and recognition. And very, very quickly, that sentinel animal will spread confidence to the rest of the group of cattle. The first step is to remain calm. Yelling and screaming is really stressful for the cattle. I want to get people's mouths closed, except for maybe just a little ch ch That's all that they need to do. Calm animals are easier to handle. When using one of these electric cattle prods or a hot shot, certainly avoid contact to eyes, udders, and other sensitive tissue. One of the temptations when working cattle on ATVs or on horseback is to herd the cattle too quickly. Generally speaking, cattle should always be moved at a walk or a slow trot. Anything faster than that will cause undue stress. Remember, one of the key points we discussed earlier is that slow movement is critical, even on a horse or an ATV. These cattle from New Mexico probably trust people horseback more than they do people on foot. So it's probably quite comforting for them to see a horse and a rider that is used correctly. The principles are the same and the cattle will tell the horseman where to be. That horse needs to have complete confidence in his situation or his surroundings. Cattle that are not used to four-wheelers need to be introduced to those, those machines from far away. One of the limitations that I see with a four-wheeler occasionally, at least mine that's older, is hard to quickly put that machine into reverse and take pressure off in a straight line like it is with a horse. Many of us are forced to hurry. And we, would, we think that uh, we have a lot of things to accomplish in a day, so we try to hurry cattle onto scales. We try to crowd cattle into slants. We try to crowd cattle and force them in places, thinking that that's very time efficient. Let me re-emphasize, slow, calm, and patient is the foundation to handling cattle properly. There's some truth to the old cowboy saying that the fastest way to move cattle is just as slow as you can.